As most of you folks know, this channel specializes in doing unusual engine swaps, and we do it mostly for fun. Yeah, I know, LS swaps are also fun, but it can get extremely expensive putting a high horsepower engine in a car. So we do the exact opposite and put an unsuitable engine in a car and then have fun trying to get it to go faster. Now, about a year ago, we dumped a 719cc three-cylinder diesel engine in our Saturn coupe, and quite frankly, I didn't think this swap would amount to much. But as it turns out, the little diesel engine did a wonderful job propelling the Saturn down the road. And the sad part was, the Saturn was in such horrible condition, we ended up scrapping the car before we finished doing the experiments we had planned. So, the Saturn's gone, and that's a shame. The good news is we did save all the key components that made that car special, and now we're going to continue the diesel experiments in a lighter and more aerodynamic body shell. Now a few months ago, we actually started doing a Volkswagen 1.6 liter diesel swap on this car, and it didn't go so well. You see, we managed to partially install the 1.6 liter Volkswagen diesel engine along with its 4-speed transaxle, but we ended up putting the project on hold because there were just too many compromises that had to be made in order to get the engine to fit. It turns out the Volkswagen engine's just way too big. Now, there's nothing wrong with a big engine in a small car, but keep in mind, the amount of space this engine required made working on the engine while it was still in the car, well, impossible. And since this is a YouTube channel that provides entertaining videos, well, the Volkswagen engine swap would have been entertaining for sure, but making modifications after the swap would have been a nightmare. Because basically every modification we planned on doing would have required the engine to be pulled in order to work on it. And that takes way too much time. So now we have a Volkswagen diesel engine waiting for its chance to shine, but it'll be in a different vehicle. We're thinking this engine may find its way into a rear-wheel drive car in the future, but we really haven't settled on anything yet. So today, we're officially kicking off the Kubota Diesel Insight project. Well, because we actually got the engine bolted to the shell, and it seems like this time around, the diesel engine's gonna work out just fine. Now, oddly enough, the first step in putting a Kubota D722 engine in a Honda Insight is to first put the Kubota D722 engine in a Saturn S-Series car. Yeah, I know, the first step of this project is pretty steep. And the reason is the transmission that was originally fitted to the Insight is totally unsuitable for this diesel engine. Now, I did my best to figure out a way to use the Insight transmission and contacted fellow YouTuber Scott Kolbeck. Now, Scott is probably the single most qualified person on the planet when it comes to these rare and unique Honda Insights. Scott runs a shop in Covina, California that specializes in these cars and when it comes to the transmission, well, he knows what modifications can be made in order to provide different gear ratios and what makes these transmissions live longer. Anyway, after talking to Scott a number of times, it was determined that with all the different gear ratios that are possible with the inside transmission, nothing would come close to the ratios we have in the Saturn Close Ratio MP3 gearbox. So the decision was made to continue using the Saturn transmission. You see, the Saturn transmission has the perfect set of gear ratios, and the only downside is the gearbox weighs a few pounds more. Anyway, on a side note, if you own one of these unusual and rare Honda Insights and can't find anybody who's willing to service the car, well, Scott's your guy. Due to the special nature of these cars, well, folks from all over send their cars to Scott for expert repairs. I'll leave a contact email in the video description. Now, engine swaps are hard enough, and doing an engine and transmission swaps even harder, especially on a front-wheel drive car. Fortunately, making the mounting brackets to install this combination of random parts wasn't too difficult. And now we have this engine-transmission combo mounted to the Honda. The best part is, we were able to do it without modifying the car one bit, and everything just bolts into place with the custom brackets. Actually, we've done a lot of different experiments on this car over the years, and the car is still totally original. During all that time, we've never drilled a single hole in the car or cut any metal. I reckon this car could be restored in the future, if enough original parts could be found. So let's talk about some of the solutions we came up with during the difficult engine swap. The gear shifter that came with the Honda Insight, well, that wasn't going to work without custom cables. Stuff like that adds to the complexity of the project. So what we did was remove the stock Insight shifter and mounted it to a wooden buck. Then we took the stock Saturn shifter and welded brackets on it so the Saturn shifter would use the exact same mounting bolt locations as the Insight shifter. And that allowed us to just bolt the Saturn shifter into the Honda. 
Of course, we were also able to use the Saturn shift cables that naturally connect right up to the transmission. Everything fits perfectly, and it was the best low cost solution we could come up with. Now at this point, we're still working on the hydraulic clutch release mechanism, and we may have to replace the stock Honda clutch master cylinder with an aftermarket unit because, well, the Saturn slave cylinder seems to want more fluid than the Honda master can supply. You win some, you lose some. So in the past, our project cars have had tiny fuel tanks, and for the most part, that works out fine. This time around, we're going to feed our little 719cc diesel engine with a massive 10.6 gallon fuel tank. Actually, to be more clear, we're going to be using a fuel tank that Honda engineered to fit this car. Or, in other words, we're going to be using the factory fuel tank. Now, normally we prefer the tiny fuel tank. However, one of the lessons we learned on the turbo diesel Saturn is using a smaller tank on a diesel tends to amp up the stink of diesel fuel in the cabin of the car. So this time around, we're going to mount the fuel tank in the correct location and hopefully we'll be able to keep the diesel fuel stink out of the cabin. Now, finding an original fuel tank for this car was not easy. But a fellow YouTuber, 100% Jake, he had an extra fuel tank that he donated to this project. And for that, I have to thank Jake because I'm not really sure what we would have done without his fuel tank. So with the larger fuel tank, it's possible we'll be able to do longer road tests in order to evaluate the pros and cons of the little diesel engine in the Honda Insight. For the cooling system, well, that's going to be easy because we're going to be using stock Honda Insight parts and all we'll really have to do is custom build the hoses that connects the engine to the radiator. Eh, that's not a big deal. We've done that before in the past on the Saturn. Now normally we don't bother installing a cooling fan, but on this build we're definitely going to have an electric cooling fan because it's probably the right thing to do. Now this car is actually stripped to the bone, and on the Saturn, when the engine was running hot, well, we used the heater core to help cool the engine down. This car, well, it ain't got no heater or much of anything else left under the dashboard. I reckon we'll need to sort that out once the colder weather arrives, but that's a problem for another day. So far, this project's basically Saturn parts, Kubota parts, and Honda Insight parts. A diesel Insight is different for sure, but we plan on taking this to the next level. The turbocharger that we used on the Saturn is this RHB31 or VZ21 turbo, and it's pretty much the cheapest little turbo you can find. The problem with this turbo is it underperformed when it was in the Saturn. Sure, it made boost, but it only developed boost when the engine was under a huge load. Now, normally turbos only make boost when the engine's under a load, so that's not a big deal. The problem we found was the turbo didn't make more than 2 pounds of boost when the engine was under a light to medium load. And that just ain't enough. So this time around, we're going to try something different to increase the boost under medium loads. But we ain't going to do it with a turbo. Nope. Instead, we want boost right off idle, and to do that, we're going to try a stupid charger. Now, the one I'm holding is an AMR300, and it's a bit on the small side for this engine, so we plan on using an AMR500 supercharger with a home-brewed boost controller. Now, using a supercharger on a diesel is not very common, and some of you folks may say, hey, Jimbo, they used them on two-stroke diesels back in the day. Well, that's true enough, but that was a totally different animal. I think for this small displacement diesel engine, the only affordable solution that we have to generate boost off idle is, well, to use a stupid charger. It'll be an interesting experiment to see if the AMR500 can generate the boost we want and how it affects overall performance at medium engine loads. So as you can see, we're making good progress on this engine swap. Now, most of the things that we've completed is stuff we've done before on different builds. In a future video, we'll get into more detail on the various parts we fabricated for those that are interested. In today's video, we're just taking a quick look at the progress so far. Now, this project has more or less been easy as far as fabrication goes. However, there is a complex part that we'll be getting into pretty soon, and that's the axles. Now, the good news is we're not dealing with a lot of horsepower here. The method we're going to use to build the axles, it's been done before on significantly higher powered vehicles and it seems to hold up well. And what I'm talking about is cutting and sleeve welding the axles. Now basically what that means is we'll be cutting the Saturn axle and cutting the Honda inside axle and welding the two different axles together to produce a unique axle. Some people, including myself, don't like the idea of sleeve welding axles, but like I said, it's been done before many times. Now since the engine in this car will only generate 30 to 35 horsepower, the axle should be plenty strong, and if not, we'll find out. 
so we still have a few more things to do before the Honda is road ready. And we'll be bringing you new videos on the Honda on a regular basis now. You know, about three years ago, this car was actually saved from the junkyard because, well, it had a massive electrical problem and the original harness was FUBAR. I feel like this car ended up in the right hands and now it's the most famous Honda Insight in the world. But, you know, I still get rude comments from some people who feel this rare car has been ruined. I guess that's an opinion I don't agree with. You see, this car has had parts removed and new parts installed, but the shell of the car is still 100% unmodified. And like I mentioned before, the car is restorable. But these things really don't sell for much and it isn't worth the effort. Now, as a YouTube project vehicle, this car is a new life and a lot of people appreciate the knowledge we share with the different and wacky modifications. You know, there's a lot to be learned if you pay attention. Of course, we're just having some fun fooling around with small engines and and except for the Saturn, we don't damage the cars we experiment with. Now that you folks got an introduction to the Honda Insight diesel project, let's take a few moments and talk about the 670cc Renault project. In the previous video, I left it up to the viewers to pick which carburetor we should try next. Either the dual carburetors or the single 36mm carburetor. And it looks like the 36mm carburetor is next on a list of things to test. Now don't worry, if you wanted to see the duels, we'll also be doing that right after we test the 36mm carburetor. Then hopefully we can transition into the Honda diesel road testing shortly after that. Now today's video is shorter than normal and that's because I'm busy doing other projects. People get mad if I skip a video and I can understand that. So we felt like it was a good time to give you folks an update on the Honda and we'll get back to the two-cylinder 760cc Predator powered 1969 Renault R10 in the next video. Until next time.